Welcome again to Hand Me a Story. My name is Jay Kramer. Let me introduce Harold Stickle to tell his story. My name is Harold Stickle. And people recognize me by this name sign with an S on my chest. I became deaf at age five. So at age six, it came time for me to go to school someplace, and I came here to this school, Washington School for the Deaf, at age six. When we first got here at school, it was kind of an awkward experience for me. Um, people were waving their hands around in the air, and I was a little fearful because I didn't know sign language. And so I stayed here at the school in about a month. I remember it was about October 31st on Halloween day. And of course, all the children were uh, getting up and getting dressed in a big rush and uh, in a big hurry to go someplace, you know, to be first in line always. So I was rushing along. I wanted to be first as well. And so I came down the stairs and I looked ahead and through the doorways, I saw this uh, vehicle parked out there. It was an old T Ford uh, parked there. And I thought, what is this for? I was so excited and I looked outside and hey, there's a car. And I call all the other uh, kids to come out and look at this car. And so all of us kids rushed out there to see where the car was. And they were also calling the um, house parents. They were called in those days. It was an older lady with white hair. And I uh, said, look, look, there's a car out there. It was a big deal, you know, and uh, that was the first time that I began to feel more confident, and I started learning more sign language at a more rapid rate after that particular day, I remember, until uh, finally I had a full language, but um, it was a, a real different experience for me at that time in my life. Here I was at age five, d a deaf boy, and uh, now here I was. Um, and uh, very quiet all my life until that point, and it was a wonderful experience realizing that language was growing for me. And I can tell you uh, several events that have occurred in my uh, lifetime here at this school. I can recall when I was about seven, there was a house parent, we called them at those in those days, and uh, and this uh, lady was older and she had white hair and uh, um, she was off on Thursdays, I remember. And uh, there was another older man who also, his name sign was an R. His name was Martin, I recall. But uh, I've, I'll never forget his name, really. Um, and uh, from what happened to me, I can always remember this man's name. But anyway, he wore glasses and he had a kind of a handlebar mustache and kind of a, a, a heavy set man with a paunch belly. And uh, before we'd go to the evening meal, oh, usually he would always have a, a wooden stick, you know, and he would, uh, um, you know, let me see your hands, let me see your hands. And he'd point at our hands, and then if they were dirty, then he'd say, you point with the stick, you go wash your hands. And so there I'd go back and wash my hands again and uh, take a look at them and see if they'd pass his inspection. He'd say, no, that's not good enough. Look at that. Go back again. Ah, uh, that'd make me mad. So uh, um, I would, uh, you know, b you know, blow air at him with my cheeks, and if I did that, then he would uh, give me a swat with that stick several times until it hurt me. So I'd cry and carry on. And uh, um, when we'd all line up to go for our meal, we'd be in the single file, and uh, um, I'd feel someone tap me on the shoulder, or grab me on the hand, or something. And uh, here come a candy bar. It was a Hershey's candy bar. And I looked at that candy bar and I thought, oh, wow. Now, you've got to remember, it was about a nickel in those days. Now, I think they're nearly up to a dollar. Uh, but um, anyway, I took this candy bar and put it in my pocket. I felt better, you know, and that's why I always remember him for doing that. After uh, that, um, he was always good to me after that one spanking. And um, another thing that happened was... Uh, um, I believe I was 11, maybe 12 years old. I can't recall exactly, but there were two boys, and one of them was named Roy Nye, and his name sign was an N on the uh, wrist. And uh, one day we thought, well, it'd be kind of fun to go down and watch him play football. 
And so I really, really wanted to play football too. And so on the way down there, we met the coach, and his name name sign was an O on the chest. And so I asked the coach, could I uh, go down and join the football team, you know, um, even though I'm kind of young, they had a first string and a second string and, and uh, of, you know, smaller boys and then uh, maybe 12, 13, 14 who would uh, kind of scrimmage every afternoon. And I said, can I play with those boys? He said, sure, why not? He said, what about clothes? And he said, well, go get some. So, oh, I was excited. And so I went upstairs into the gym. Up there was the third floor in the gymnasium. And that's where we, the boys had uh, their building. And so I went up there, and I looked and looked through all this, the gear, and I found a pair of pants that seemed to fit okay. They were kind of old and crummy looking, uh, and they came clear up here on me, but I thought, well, that's good enough. I'll find some more string and, and uh, lace them up and tighten them, and it'll be good enough. They'll work good for me. And then I looked through the jerseys, and I found some old worn-out junk. And then I finally found one. It didn't look too bad. It was old. It was green, I remember, with white numbers on it. Um, it was very old, probably from 1900. And so I put that on. It was too big for me. The sleeves hung way down low, and they had holes in the elbows. And then I looked for some kind of a, a helmet to wear on my head, and I found one that had the ear flaps on it. You know what I'm talking about. And it looked pretty good to me, so on with those clothes and down the stairs I went and down down where they're playing football and I come down there and say get out of here you kid you know but he said and I said no the coach told me I could play they said well okay come ahead so anyway my friend I was telling you about was with me and so there we were back and forth scrimmaging with this other team with butting heads if you will and uh, when I'd see the other boys coming at me, I would uh, think, oh, they're going to come and smash over me, and I'll just jump out of the way. I was smaller than they were, and uh, it had to be quite cagey. And so when that was all done, then we all had to go up and take a bath. And uh, um, so around there we went, and he said, no, no, you go have to go through uh, where the, the other boys are. And so I wanted to go through the boys who weren't playing football. I wore this old ugly uniform, and the boys were thinking, oh, look at him. He got to play football. You know, so they flocked after me. They were excited and curious. So I went to the shower room and took my bath. And then pretty quick, here came um, the first string. You know, they finished early. They were going to come in and, and uh, take their baths now. And there I was when they said, get out of here, you kid, you know. Here I was in their uh, space, if you will, and I hadn't even taken my bath yet. And so I, I got up and went out into the hallway and uh, it, uh, struggled to get dressed, put the pants back on and so on. And uh, it was kind of a mess. But uh, I thought, well, these, uh, I'll just take them back because they're really not suitable. And so when the evening meal came along that night, I began to notice I was itchy. I had uh, just started scratching all over. It got worse and worse, uh, itching and scratching. And and then uh, um, the evening wore on. I got to bed. And, oh, I was in a, a terrible rash. I, I couldn't sleep hardly at all that night. The next morning when I woke up, I went to the house parent, and that was uh, Mr. McDonald at that time. And I said, look at me. And he said, oh, my gosh. He said, you've got um, some kind of bug all over you. And so, um, and also the same with my friend uh, that went with me. And so we had to go over to the infirmary. And they took a look at us there and, and studied us over. And he said, well, maybe you've got measles. No, this can't be measles. Maybe it's some kind of an itch. So when's the last time you took a bath, boy? I said, I tried to explain. I tried to take a bath yesterday. And so uh, they took me. He said, well, you got to take a bath. So they, uh, the nurse put me in one tub. And then my friend went to another tub for his bath filled it up with water, and they put some kind of brown soap stuff in there, and uh, it smelled terrible. So I had to scrub myself with this brown soap and, and uh, wash up. And uh, afterward, I felt better. And so I said, no, no, you're not leaving here. You're staying right here. I said, how come I have to stay in here? He said, well, we don't want what you have to go to the other students. So maybe it's measles, maybe it's not. So you're going to have to stay here. So there I was, stuck in the infirmary trapped. Then Monday came, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then Thursday came along finally, and the nurse was off that day. And they had a substitute, uh, another person, a lady, came in, and her name was Mrs. 
Langlois, and her name sign was like this across the chest and to the waist. And uh, she was a very neat and fastidious woman, always looked very, very nice. And she came and said, what is wrong with you boys? She said, oh, stay out. I don't want you here and stay away from me. So I want you to go down to the last part of the room and you boys just stay down there. So they would bring us some uh, food at meal times, and uh, we were free to walk around, but she wouldn't let us. She made us stay at the far end of the room, so we were stuck there. And at 5 o'clock, it was time for her to go eat, and so then she locked us in. There was a little kind of a, a, kind of a room there at this infirmary, and she made us stay confined in this small place. So after a while, I had to go to the bathroom, and so did my friend. And so I was kind of dancing around, you know, thinking, I've got to go to the bathroom. I can't wait. We couldn't get out. We were locked in this place. And so finally, um, we decided, well, we'll just have to open up the window, I guess, and, and uh, go outside. And so um, pretty soon, it was, I felt I had to go to the bathroom. Now what am I going to do? So the door was still locked. My friend had already gone to the bathroom. And the nurse had stay and stay. And I knew she was talking with somebody. She didn't come back. And I couldn't hold it any longer. So I decided, well... Out the window I go, too. And so I did. And that's just some um, uh, amusing parts of my life at Washington School for the Deaf. I'll tell you some other things also that happened to me. The school in those days had a track, and we had a coach, the same coach that did football. He worked very diligently on this track. He was always out there fussing with it. And they'd take coal from the burner and uh, when it was burned, and they would uh, cart it over and, and dump it onto the track and, and grind it down and, and to make the track look very, very nice. And um, I was more of a baseball player. And uh, track really was uh, not my forte, but I did like playing baseball. And one particular uh, day, there was going to be a meet and the next day on Saturday. And um, I, I really uh, wasn't wanting to practice track. I was more of a baseball player. And so I thought, well, I would uh, work instead of uh, doing the track practice. And so off to work I went and was working along and got down toward the end where the, the, the gym was. It was called Hunter Gym. And uh, we were walking along there and working and uh, working on the outside circle on this track. And we got to this particular spot and dumped the load that we were working with. And I said to my friend, there was another guy there with me, and his uh, last name was Flood. But anyway, the two of us had been working together. And I said to him, I wonder, look up at that window there. Do you think that's uh, solid? Or do you think maybe it might be hollow in there? And we were just kind of wondering. And the other kid says, well, I don't know. And, you know, and he's kind of a tough kid. He'd do anything. So he picked up a rock and threw it up there and broke the window. And so I turned around with my wheelbarrow and walked away. And I knew that this window, you know, uh, was hollow because of that rock. So that was just another little funny thing that happened while I was a student at Washington School for the Deaf. 